good people of Nashville, Tennessee, my hometown, and all the surrounding counties, a big Nashville welcome to Mr. Jerry Padalecki and Jensen Echo. What's up, what's up, Nashville? Howdy. The, uh, the spotlights work. <laughs> I see some uh, silhouette heads and uh, some robots in the desk. Uh, any first timers? <laughs> what the fuck took us so long? <laughs> I'm not sure. Just kidding. What? Uh, welcome to the big SBN family. That's it. I said to be here to close out 2023 from the year for us for sure. Uh, hopefully that has been safe sound. Hopefully uh, nobody here was affected by the crazy catastrophe that befell the year. So sending love and prayers and thoughts for, uh, for the surrounding areas. Uh, like about 20 of us yesterday. Yeah. 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 Uh, How are you doing? I'm doing well, man. I can't believe it's December of 23. <laughs> what did you say? Oh, uh, all right. It's going to be one of those shows. She's like, did you poo? <laughs> Recently? <laughs> Bullshit has no nutrient value. 
be used as an editor. That's, that's my thought. Neither does this answer. So. <laughs> What's uh, your, what, what do you think? I don't know. I think it could be the same. I think maybe police reminder. I think it would maybe be Yeah, I think that may have shed some light into what that relationship and what the history was behind that, but I still think Dean would have this, this wishful idea of what life could have been. Even though he knew, he knew or, or knows more, I think he still maybe held that as a, a, bit, of a, a bit of a dream, even though he knows it would never really be like that, but still. Thank you so much, and to give you credit, what is your official last name? My name is Nicole Monsolvik. Hi, Nicole. Monsolvik. Okay. Okay. What are the last four digits of your social security? Very nice to meet you, Nicole. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thanks. Thanks. It's your mother's name. What's your feelings up there? Do I have to marry them as well? <laughs> That's a different kind of gen dream. <laughs> set, it's much easier to kind of flip that switch, um, you know. There's also so much, you sort of were saying acting process, there's a lot of prep that goes into it. So if somebody was just here and like, hey, I'm a demon, yeah, like, well, what am I doing? Like, do I like them? Am I using them? Are they using me? Or, so there's so much thought that goes into it before it, that if there was a script, uh, then if that was the first scene we filmed in the script, then I've already done doesn't read of the script about the whole same feel. Uh, where is this in the episode? Is this climactic? Like, when I kill them or they kill me or whatever. Uh, so it, there's, a lot of, there's a lot of crap. I feel like he and I are similar to the fact that we, we know a scene going into it, but we haven't, we, we know the waypoints that we have to hit. So we know we gotta get here, we know we gotta get there, but the, the in-between is the stuff that he and I um, kind of allow to be discovered. We have, we have ideas about how we want to get from point A to B, but um, the great thing with, with, you know, getting to work with him is it was never, it was never overly rehearsed to where, it, you know, he was reacting to what I was doing and I was, I was doing the same. And so we were, we were available for these kind of happy accidents that would happen within the scenes. That being said, we knew where we needed to go. We knew where we needed to hit the different, different points. And, and, uh, and so I think like, just snapping into that uh, with the knowledge of kind of a roadmap uh, made it much easier to kind of get into character. And then that also made it easier to kind of uh, riff while you're in that character to come up with maybe some, some improvisation. But just like sitting here on the stage and being like, hey, be deep. Um, Jared's right, it doesn't, there, there's a little more prep that goes into it in order for us to kind of step into those shoes. Yeah, sometimes in the puzzle, we start with the border. Sometimes we start. Uh, <clears throat> with Pearl Jam. 
In stores to prove it. Yeah, in stores to prove it. It's an embarrassing story to prove it. Uh, yeah, uh, that, that sticks out to me. I, I grew up with a lot of different music in, in my house. My dad listened to a lot of, uh, a lot of uh, like Frank Sinatra, Tony Bennett, standards type stuff, but then, you know, but then he also listened to uh, uh, more modern uh, classic rock. Um, you know, my mom listened to country music. So uh, I don't know. I, I I could I could pick and choose uh, dozens of bands. Um, I'll say one. This is a band that's never gotten old to me. You know, some music you have to listen to it for so long. It's like ah, uh, all right, I'll maybe you tire of it a little bit. But um, you know, there's the obvious choices like the, the you know Zeppelin and the Stones um, and even the Beatles. And, uh, but I'll say the Allman Brothers. Um, I still feel like I'm discovering their music, even even though I've been listening to it for you know most of my life. What about what about you? Um, I really like Lawrence Wayne. Great. <laughs> <laughs> I, I know him. I know him. Yeah, but they're getting older. <laughs> they're right behind me. Aren't they? <laughs> Good music taste. Yeah. Hi. Hi. Hello, I'm Lynn. Um, I'm wondering what have been and Sam's biggest regrets. Funny you should ask. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't do anything. I didn't do anything. I didn't do anything. I didn't do anything. What did she say about that? That's how she was. That's how she posed the question. <laughs> uh, my my. I think Sam's. I think one of Sam's bigger regrets rhymes with Amelia. I mean, <laughs> <laughs> like persona non grata. <laughs> uh, what you call me? <laughs> uh, yeah, I think Sam would have felt bad about time that he didn't uh, go out for his brother. Though I think the last time he understood that his brother was saying goodbye. Dean, I mean, gosh, I don't know. Uh, I'll choose one that could say yes.
Jared Pickett. I think there's probably a, a good amount of outtakes from that from that moment. It's <laughs> a great scene. Uh, thank you so much. Sandwich has to wear makeup. So stupid. It's true. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, that it's is true. true. <laughs> yes, but for the rest of it, I don't know. Uh, uh, hi. hi. They did? Did the other team not show? <laughs> no, they won, they won the first draft pick for next year. If I lose it. Um, what? Free, free 
What are you, 12? <laughs> Good. Hi, 
favorite moment with with our families this year? Ooh. Wow. I'll start. So, um, <laughs> it, it's so many, so many. Uh, but we, uh, Jen and the kids and I went to uh, Australia uh, for the holidays. I actually went from Nashville this time last year to Australia and Tasmania because of the buddy out there. And we ended up like VRBOing the house and we saw the, the Sydney fireworks. Uh, and like from the balcony of this place we rented, uh, it was a fun moment to see how happy the kids were. I think most of the time it's, it's seeing the kids play, um, and that's something he and I get to do as our job, which is a legit job. We can talk about preparation and, and work and sacrifice and this and that, but when they call action, they get to play. Uh, and it's a lot of fun. And so seeing the kids play and not good about their worries, you know, whether they may be bullying school or homework or whatever. Um, it was a lot of fun. So I think watching fireworks and the kiddos in the city was pretty special. Um, yeah. I mean, like you said, there's, you know, it's a lot that we had. Um, we, we got given the gift of, of time off uh, this year. Um, this is not a fortunate reason because of the strike. But that, that certainly gave us um, some time, a lot of time to, to spend with family. Um, I'll say there's, yeah, you know, we took trips and all of those were very memorable. Um, but I'll say one thing that when I close my eyes, what I see, uh, and that's when the kids come home from school, when I get to go pick them up from school and I get to ask them about their day and that little drive home. But when they get home, they go straight out the back door and to the, we have a play set, a, a trampoline, and watching them sprint out there and then the dog chasing them. And um, I just kind of sit down on the back porch and just watch them play. And that's what I see when I close my eyes. Thank you. He's not prepared ever, yeah. so <laughs> welcome to my world. Hi, Aramilla. Uh, my question is for Jensen. Sorry, Jared. <laughs> Next. <laughs> um, Jensen, do you plan on doing another live radio company show anytime soon? Uh, good question. I was just talking about the uh, talking about this with somebody backstage. Um, no, no, no hard plans to, but it's definitely uh, being discussed. Um, yeah, thank you. Thank you, Arbor. Hi. Hi, my name is Brooklyn. What was your favorite episode of Supernatural? To film? Oh, wow. In hindsight or at the time? I mean, because I, I, I look back and, like, French Mistake, looking back now, I love it, but. I was so anxious the entire time, so nervous, that I didn't have a great time filming it, but in hindsight, I love the memory of having filmed it. Does that make any sense? It kind of sounds weird. It was nervous. It was funny, it was an awkward key, I don't know. <laughs> you know the cracker where people like kidding me with jock straps and stuff? I was like, this sucks. Like, who thinks this is funny? You know? Changing, changing, changing. Uh, like for these commercials and shit, I was like, this, this, uh, I, don't, I, don't, I don't like this very much. Uh, but um, it, riding the motorcycles around and falling around, and, like it, in hindsight, it was amazing. But during the film, I was like, this might be the worst thing that's ever happened in my life. So, uh, I, and then strange, like sacrifice, uh, the end of uh, season eight was awful to film, but I love that I got to experience it. You know, like it was three days in an abandoned church with Mark Shepard, who we were all singing about too. Yeah. 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 It wasn't enjoyable during it. It was, it was always enjoyable, so I'm not a bitch, but it was stressful during it, but those were the two episodes that I just couldn't find. But like the end, you know, like that, 
I was, yeah, I was going to say that the one hope would be the end, uh, and it's and it's. I think it's a similar thing. It's because it was such a challenge to shoot those particular episodes that it was. Yeah, it was very taxing during shooting those uh, those that, that particular episode for me. I was playing two versions of Dean, um, but it's one that I look back on with great pride because of how challenging it was. Um, I, I, I'll say that, you guys might not like this, that one of my favorite episodes to, to film uh, was the, uh, the very last episode. Uh, I'll, I'll, I'll tell you why. It's because we've gotten to a point where he and I can truly reflect and appreciate the, the magnitude of the moment that was happening in front of us. I, I, when I got into that car and I drove it, he was driving to heaven, I knew that that was gonna be the final drive for this run of, of the show. And, you know, I, I think I have video, I, I like set my, little, my phone up in the seat and recorded me doing that at the that final drive. And then he and I on the bridge, like we, there were moments that we, he and I took, multiple moments that he and I took to ourselves without the cameras rolling. And so I think that was precious for, for me. And that, that meant so much because of the journey we had gone on and where we had ended up together. So that's, that's, but if you're just like, what was fun? Uh, Yellow Beaver was fun. <laughs> <laughs> you know what? I agree 100%. Yeah. Um, it hurt me while you were talking about it. Uh, I think the only episode that I really feel like I just had fun during was baby. Yeah. It, wasn't, it, wasn't, it wasn't the same of you show. It yeah. was the baby show. Yeah. And so it was like, it was fun and some guys to It's also the most kind of unique so, uh, uh, process of filming of an episode is because they just they just mounted cameras to your car and then just sent us out into the wild. <laughs> and, and just fingers crossed, I hope these two knuckleheads can get the scene. Yeah, it and was it was up to us. The first time in a decade and a half where we weren't going on the set of a show about Sam Dean Winchester, like this episode was about me. So we had to go and just talk, be talks in the wheel. You know, it wasn't like, it felt like less pressure, even though we were in the entire episode. Um, yeah, we really, uh, yeah, that's, that's a great yeah. answer. Thank you. One of my favorite episodes. So. Yeah. 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 Right for the Robbie Thompson special. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. I'm Kimba from New Orleans. Who that? Who that? Um, you played a different Sam and Dean from Guerrilla Universe in season 15. How do you think it went for them in Rio? What do you think happened to them? <laughs> Wait for season 16 to find out. Yeah. I will say this. Uh, I have that purple suit. What is it? Like a, yeah, there was no reason for it to ever get used in any TV show. And luckily, when someone gets, when, when like a piece of clothing gets made for Jared Padalecki, it'll never fit anybody else. <laughs> so, like, listen, we're never going to use this again. It won't fit in I think I have that suede jacket. <laughs> <laughs> I do. <laughs> I know why, because they bought it and it was it was so expensive they couldn't get a double, so it never got used. It was just hanging in the closet and they were like, oh wait, you can use this because you have to do the stunts. And I was like, perfect. And then they came home with it. Yeah, they're they're uh, they're having a good time at ball down Rio. And you'll see. You'll see. We, uh, because my wife is uh, from Louisiana, mm -hmm. uh, and um, my her and, and her mother, uh, they my in laws usually will spend holidays with us. We do a gumbo party, uh, a holiday gumbo party, and, and they, my, my wife and her mom, have spent like all day making the, 
the, the gumbo. I mean, it's you know, it's a problem. For those that, that know, uh, like just making the roux is a, a very uh, specific thing to do. So that's a uh, a little a little piece of Cajun culture that uh, that we we celebrate at Christmas, and it's uh, it's a it's a favorite amongst family and friends. Um, yeah, our annual gumbo party. You've had, you've, okay. you've, you've, been a part, you've been a part of a couple of those. Um, we have tamales uh, on Christmas Day uh, and smokies, which I don't know. You know, like, I think the little uh, hot dog companies, cocktail beans. Thank you, I got one. Uh, wait, no, wait. <laughs> midday nap after, so these days as parents, legitimately, my Christmas uh, kind of is consisting of me just getting all the wrapping paper and boxes from all the presents that kids are opening and trying to get rid of it and like put it outside because it's everywhere. Uh, but then we always have like a late breakfast and sit down and you know, watch TV, also the movies, Home Alone, Love Actually, Although Love Actually is not a movie you want to put on when the kids are in the room. There's a, one particular storyline that's not for children. Here's a funny story. So I'm with a, I, uh, I did a lot of things in Africa, and there was a, a movie theater there, which was someone's garage, and they had like three movies. One was in German, one was in Afrikaans, and one was Love Actually. That's like uh, December 2003. And so I went and watched Love Actually probably 12 times. I go from Africa to Australia to shoot on West, and we're all sitting there shooting shit, and I was like, man, uh, have y'all seen Love Actually? It's like me and Michelle Murray and Alicia Cuthbert, and Paris Hilton, this and that. And they're like, yeah. I was like, I love it. And Alicia was looking at me, and she's gonna like, give me a funny look. And I'm like, I'm, I'm serious, I, the movie's awesome. Like, you, you, you gotta see it, I've seen it a dozen times. And she's looking at me funny, and I'm misconstruing the look she's giving me, because she's looking at me, and I'm like, oh, she just doesn't think I would like a rom-com or something. And I was like, I'm not kidding. I, 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 I can't wait to watch it again. You gotta watch it. She goes, I, I was in it. <laughs> oh, yeah. She was one of the, I just, I, I literally had a nerve. She looked like the hot sisters or whatever at the end. Do, do the, um, do the, does the elf come to your elf, house? Yeah, elf's been moving around. Yep. Yeah, that's, that's stressful. <laughs> Bad mornings, man. <laughs> that elf can ruin a morning for me. Very quickly. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Ours, ours is so uh, stressful. <laughs> moving around, baked potato chips. Uh, yeah. Thank you so much. Yeah. Thank you. Nice. Hey, Uh, 
That's, you know what's really funny? Oh my gosh. Again, almost like the earlier question about which episode was the most fun to film. During shooting, it's not even like you miss things yet. You know you're missing things, you're missing events, you're missing birthday parties, you're missing graduations, you're missing weddings, um, et cetera, et cetera. You miss your fin uh, family, obviously. But during it, it's just kind of like, it's a different mode you go into. It's like, well, I can't, be in. my friends call me, the answer is no. I just can't. I mean, you don't have the day off. I have eight pages of spawn, so I have to work with them. So I'm sorry, I love you, answer is no. And you kind of find out who your real friends are because they care. Like, I, I know you love me, I love you too, but I know you're busy for the next eight months. You know? uh, and once you can wade above the water and catch your breath, then you can go. Um, yeah, right. I think a lot of things that we wouldn't, wouldn't trade it. I wouldn't trade it. I wouldn't trade it. I think a lot of the stuff that we missed uh, would have been fun. It would have been fun to go to this game, to this party, to this. This guy's trip, you know. I miss, I miss, yeah. like, I, I, buddies that do, like, an annual, like, golf trip. Golf trip, yeah. I would love, I mean, I've only been yeah. to, like, two. And yeah. I've probably done a dozen. And, and, but I was just never available. And they, they got it. They were like, yeah, no, go ahead. Yeah. But, but it's your best. Yeah. But it's, but it's also, like, I, I wouldn't change it. I, I, I took pride in what I was doing in order to miss it. Yeah, and the videos that he got, during their golf trip are going to last a lot longer than the videos of their golf trip. Uh, we all get to watch them because it was called Spring. <laughs> yeah, thank you. Jim Beaver's impossible to break. He's hard to break. 
uh, between action and cut. And uh, there was one time where there was the, during one of the Gabriel episodes when we were in the middle of his bunker, and the line of dialogue I had to say was kind of a bit of a tongue twister. And so I messed it up. I was like, well, I'll go back home. Whatever. And so it made the Gabriel as a matter of fact. I love it because I ended up purposely, it's over my shoulder onto him, and I just say, Gabriel, no, we have to, we have to, we have to, we have to, we have to. <laughs> and you can see his face, he's like, <laughs> so it's more like a within the scene, just trying to cut tension. Not that there's tension, but it's just a slog. You know, you live for 14 hours, 16 hours, you're tired. Like, hey, let's just laugh. It's gonna take 30 seconds out of our day. Let's laugh, and then it's like it's like having a cup of coffee or something. Like, provides an energy for another hour. Lar it's largely impromptu messing with each other. There was there was there weren't any like you know George Clooney style pranks where it was you know very long and drawn out and thoughtful and you know he and I would just if the if the, the opportunity presented itself to mess with each other we we would we would generally do it. Um, but it was it it was also uh, just trying to you know make each other laugh and but it was. And also make the crew laugh. Oh, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Like yeah, we, we were, we were all laughing. And, yeah. and I, but I will say, yeah, to reiterate what you were saying, uh, we we very quickly realized that we were uh, we were much more effective joining forces <laughs> against people like Misha and Clark and our crew, and highly effective. <laughs> oh, and like messing with Misha and Al Cow. Oh, so easy. Like so Misha's fun. the easiest to break. I mean, that guy has just a glass jaw. Yes. <laughs> and, and, yeah, and Alex, too. Um, but, uh, yeah, so they, like, like pranks were, um, were really pranks. It was more of just, like, really just messing, messing with each other, having, having a good time and making each other laugh. And there, were, there were countless guest stars that were from onto our set to just be like, this is the most unprofessional. <laughs> fun set I've ever been a part of. And that was one thing that we, um, that uh, was important to us is that when we, when we were at work, we got the work done, clearly. We always got the work done, but we sure as hell had a fun time getting it. Being out and about, I think part of 
the reason I, I love Austin, I think a lot of people love Austin, is the feeling that, that people have. Like it's, it's, it does get warm, so people just move slower. It's kind of just, hey man, you know, it just feels like a, like a group of friends. So I would, I would say try and find a, a sporting event or a concert. Um, <clears throat> if T-Swift comes back through, Eras Tour. <laughs> That's so it's so specific to Austin. Yes. Yeah. So specific to, to the culture that is. Uh, I, 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 let me let, let me help them out. Um, what you want to do is take a nice baby fall evening and uh, late in the afternoon take a nice walk around Town Lake, or also known as Lake Bird Lake, uh, and then and then end yourself up on the, the Congress Street Bridge and watch the bats come out. From out of the it's, uh, it's an incredible sight. Is I, how many billions? Is it? Is, yeah, two billion, right? Two billion. Two billion bats fly out at dusk every night, and it's like this cloud, this black cloud of, of bats, and it's pretty. It's pretty amazing. They all live under the bridge right there downtown, um, and then and then maybe walking over to uh, Barton Springs, walk down Barton Springs, take uh, take a seat at Terry Black's, get you some barbecue. Um, and then maybe that evening go to a show at the movie theater. There you go. And if there's time left, I have his address, so just be in the And I'm by, I will probably have some gumbo. Uh, Jennifer from Baltimore, thank you so much. <laughs> Thanks for being here. Thank you guys for being here.